If you watched my previous video, I talked about the three-moment equation. Uh, I want to analyze that same beam that I analyzed in the previous video, but this time I want to use what's called the flexibility method, uh, which is also known as the method of consistent deformations. Uh, so once again, this is the beam that I want to analyze. Uh, I want to determine what the reactions R sub A, R sub B, and R sub C are. Uh, but this time I want to use the flexibility method. So there are several steps that I need to go through to do that. Now before I actually do it, uh, let me show you something. Uh, if you pick up an introductory level structural analysis textbook, usually in the appendix there are cookbook formulas that uh, tell you what the deflection of a beam is given various loading scenarios. So here's, uh, here are some formulas that I pulled from the appendix of a textbook. If I've got a simply supported beam that's length L, uh, let's say that we apply a point load P, a distance A from the left end. I want to know what the deflection delta is at a location X feet or meters from the left support. Okay, so here are some cookbook formulas. If I'm interested in the deflection to the left of the load, that's X is less than or equal to A, then I use this first formula. Okay, got that? Okay, if I'm interested in the deflection over here to the right of the load, then I'd use the second equation. That's if X is greater than or equal to A. Okay, so label the points A, B, and C. I think I forgot to do that initially. Okay, so A, B, and C, I want to determine the reactions R sub A, R sub B, and R sub C. So using the flexibility method, uh, step one, okay, see this at the top of the screen. Step one is to select a redundant. Okay, I've got three reactions here. Uh, if the material is strong enough, I could actually take out the R sub B and uh, the reactions at A and C uh, would be good enough. I mean, it would be simply supported if I were to take out the R sub B. Uh, and assuming that the material is strong enough and that the cross section is big enough, the beam would still hold up. So R sub B, I'm going to consider that my redundant. Okay, so I say select a redundant reaction. I'll call it R sub B. That'll be my redundant. Step two. Remove that redundant, remove the roller at B, to create a primary structure, a primary structure. Calculate the deflection, or rotation if I'm interested in slope. Calculate the deflection at that redundant. So in this case, I'm interested in a deflection. So step two, remove the redundant to create a primary structure. Okay, so that's what you see here in step two. Okay, so what happened here? Okay, the 15 kip load. That's 40 feet to the left of point A. Pardon me, that's 40 feet to the right of point A. Uh, B, point B, that's 30 feet to the right of point A. So you notice that I take out that roller, take it out, and I'm left with this. Okay, a simply supported beam, you see that? Okay, now do you or do you not see what I did here? What? Okay, so I take out that roller at B, and what happens when I take out that roller? Well. Okay, it's going to deflect, isn't it? It's going to deflect because that roller isn't there anymore. The deflection I will call delta sub B zero. Uh, the first subscript means that it's at point B. The uh, second subscript denotes that it's the primary structure, sometimes called the released structure. Okay, how do I determine that delta sub B zero? I remember those formulas I gave you a few moments ago? Does this look familiar? Okay, I'm interested in the deflection at point B. See this first formula? You got it? That's this formula down here at the bottom. Okay, so delta sub B zero. Okay, I hope you wrote down that formula. P times L minus A, which I have labeled in the figure. Okay, L is a 60, feet be 60 foot long beam. L minus A times X. X is where I'm interested in the deflection, in this case 30 feet, uh, times uh, two times L times A minus a squared minus x squared. And then in the denominator, 6 times L times E times I. Okay, if I simplify all this, I get delta sub B sub 0 is 57,500 divided by EI. Okay, so remember this. Remember this expression for delta sub B sub 0. Uh, be careful with the units. Uh, if I know what E is, uh, I'd want it to be in kips per square foot. I would be in feet to the fourth. Uh, so if I stick them into this expression, I have delta sub B sub zero as feet. And then I probably want to convert it into convert it into inches. Okay, so that's step two. 
remove the redundant, create the primary or the release structure, calculate the deflection at that now missing redundant, and that's what I just did. So what's step three? Okay, step three says uh, remove the load from the primary structure and apply a unit load, or a moment if I'm interested in slope, at uh, and in the deflection, uh, pardon me, the direction of the redundant force, calculate the deflection at the redundant. So remove the load from the primary structure. Remember this, this was the primary structure. Remove the load, so take out that 15. Okay, remove the load from the primary structure and apply a unit load at and in the direction of the redundant force. Okay, so watch this. Okay, so that's what I have here, you see? I took off the 15 kips. I apply a one kip load at point B, pushing up, and you see it, uh, it will create a deflection delta sub B, you see that? I wanna calculate what that delta sub B is. How do I do that? And I wonder if you can hear that helicopter going overhead. Take a look at this formula here, delta sub B. How do I get that? Does this look familiar? Okay, you see the first formula? I can use that again. As a matter of fact, I could also use the second formula. Try it if you don't believe me. Okay, so both A and X would be equal to each other in this case. If I want to use that formula for this, uh, both L and A would be the same thing. Uh, uh, not L and A, I mean A and X. L is 60, it's a 60 foot beam. Uh, a is 30 feet, X is also 30 feet. Okay, so L is 60, A is uh, 30, X is 30. Okay, L is 60 in the denominator. Okay, so uh, what I get then is a delta sub B, based on this loading configuration, is 4,500 over EI. So that's step three. Okay, so to summarize, to summarize, okay, where did I start this? Oh, okay. I started off with this beam, started off with this beam. Uh, take out the, the roller at B. When I do that, I'm gonna wind up with this. Okay, I've got a deflection at B. Okay, well, I can't have that. Okay, so in step three, I have to push it back. Okay, and I find that uh, if I have no load, uh, no uh, 15 kip load, but I do have this one kip load pushing it back, uh, the deflection would be 4,500 over EI. Okay, how does that look? Uh, the delta sub B. So uh, what we have here is uh, the magnitude, uh, not the magnitude, uh, but the deflection at point B uh, based on this loading configuration. Okay, step four. Okay, step four. Uh, repeat step three for all redundants. In this case, I only had one redundant, but if I had more than one redundant, I'd have to repeat this. Uh, this delta sub B is sometimes called the flexibility coefficient, so remember that word. Uh, remember that phrase, flexibility coefficient. Uh, okay, so step three uh, it would have to be repeated for any other redundance that I have. Okay, so how does that look? And now step five is to set up the compatibility equation, or compatibility equations is, is, is a plural, uh, to solve for the redundant, or redundance. Is, is a... Okay, so here's the magic equation, delta sub b sub zero plus uh, flexibility coefficient times r sub b, r sub b, some books call it x sub b to make it more general, but in this case my redundant was r sub b, so I put r sub b in there. Okay, delta sub b sub zero, I calculated that earlier. Stick a negative sign in front of it. Maybe I should have done that earlier. But remember step two back here? Remember I calculated, remember this? Remember I calculated the delta sub b sub zero? Five, uh, pardon me, 57,500 over EI. That's what I have here. Put a negative in front of it because it's down. Uh, plus the flexibility coefficient, I found that a few moments ago in step three, 4,500 over EI times R sub B, that's the unknown, isn't it? What? So uh, remember that I had my original structure, I removed the support at point B, then I pushed it back up again. Okay, when I push it back up again, uh, what I have is this equation here. Okay, how does that look? 
And there would be more equations if I had more redundance. Okay, so backing out what R sub B is, I find that R sub B is 12.7 kips, where the 7 repeats. If you watched my previous video, I did this same example, but I was using the three-moment equation. Uh, did I wind up with this same value for R sub B? What? Did I wind up with 12.7 kips uh, for R sub B? Well, I hope I did. Uh, one way to verify your work is to try to solve a problem using uh, different uh, equations or different, different, uh, different methodologies. And if you wind up with the same answer, that means that you probably did it correctly. If you, if you solve a problem one way using one methodology, and then you use another methodology and find that your number is, is different, then uh, you made a mistake somewhere. Uh, so uh, that's my R sub B. So how do I find the R sub A and R sub C? Okay, so the R sub B, I got that. Okay, sorry, I was looking for a pen. So R sub B is 12.7. Let me put that in here. 12.7 kips. Okay, so how do I find R sub A and R sub C? Well, now I can use the equations of equilibrium from uh, statics. Okay, step six, calculate the other reactions using statics. Okay, so uh, the sum of the moments about point A is zero. Take a look at this equation. Actually, don't look at the answer yet. Uh, you see R, R sub C is the unknown, 12.7 times 30. Okay, so that's the reaction at B that I just found, times moment arm 30. Uh, minus uh, 15 times 40. Okay, 15 times moment arm 30. Uh, plus uh, unknown reaction C times 60. Okay, so R sub C times uh, 60 equal to zero. I find that the reaction at C is 3.61, so I can put that in here. 3.61 at C. And then uh, equilibrium in the y direction. So R sub A, which is still unknown, plus 12.7, that's the R sub B, minus the 15 kip load, plus the R sub C that I just found. R sub A, negative 1.38. Okay, so R sub A, negative 1.38. And I think that 8 repeats, actually. I forgot to put that in there. R sub A, a negative 1.38. Uh, so this 8 repeats. Negative 1.38 where the 8 repeats. Okay, so that's the R sub A. So I have found all three support reactions for this beam using the flexibility method. So there you have it.